the magic of Conan Exile. Wizard Sage. Meanwhile, in Wizard Lair. Greetings, Traveller. I'm Wizard Sage, the wise old mage of the castle. And I'm glad you could make it on our very first episode of the series about Conan Exiles. What is Conan Exiles, you say? Conan Exiles is an open-world survival game in the brutal lands of Conan the Barbarian. As a quick recap of what the game actually is, you are an exile, outcast and downtrodden, sentenced to walk in a barbaric wasteland where the weak are crushed and only the strong can live. Here you must fight to survive, build, and dominate the world alone on your own server or with enemies and allies in online multiplayer. Now when the game does release, we will be hosting our own server called Lost Chapters Roleplay. For all you avid roleplayers out there, I'll leave a link in the description. You're welcome to join our community. Come join us, build alliances, go to war with us. You know, whatever you want, I'm going to be roleplaying as an evil wizard with an army of skeletons, so I'm sure you'll see me. So, so touching on what this video actually is about, this video is about the magic of Conan. <laughs> Are you following, Traveller? Are you with me? Good. So the magic of Conan Exiles. To talk about the magic, we're going to have to talk about the religions. Now this whole next section, I'm going to go in depth on each of the gods that have been confirmed so far. Starting with... Yogg. Now Yogg was the demon god of evil, who had an eternal enemy, Mitra. Yogg's worshippers built a crypt and a giant statue depicting him with jewels as eyes, creating a center of power. During the Hyborian era, that ancient temple was lost and ended up being located underground near the eastern border of Aquilona. Some years before Conan's reign in Aquilona, Yogg was worshipped as king of demons by Zwagir. He was also worshipped by the Dafar and was believed to have ruled the desert demons of Shem. Now going by what information I've been able to gather here, we can safely say that Yogg will be the kind of god that will give powers of necromancy, you know, the kind of a warlock type of class. It seems to me anyway, it's going to be very summoning dark powers, large avatars kind of thing. Anyway, moving on. Set. Set, the ancient serpent god, is master of darkness and the beasts that hunt by night, lord of the red desert and ruler of the sunken cities and the black gulfs between the stars. Sometimes known as Yig, he commands hordes of hissing serpents and he wrecks the cities and the spirits of men with shrieking violent winds. For a million years or more, Set the Old Serpent has been worshipped by reptilian serpent people whose empire once spanned the jungles of the pre-human Thorian continent. Theirs was a world of dinosaurs, ancient demons and sorcery beyond that now known to men. Primitive humans, in reality no more than apes, were kept as slave races. Now Set is the god of serpent and sacrifice. And as you've seen in the trailers, the summoning of the massive snake is kind of a big hint for what kind of powers will be available. I'm assuming there'll be something along the lines of crafting snake arrows. I don't really, can't say for magic really, maybe besides some sort of venom? I don't know, we'll have to see. Anyway, moving on. Mitra. Mitra, the primary god of the Hyborians, is a benevolent god, believed to be all-pervasive and without form. Although he is often pictured as a tall man with wide-set, piercing eyes, curly hair and a patriarchal beard, Mitra takes no living sacrifices, although the temple takes extensive donations of money and services. According to Mitraic belief, 
Each person is called to a virtuous life. It is the obligation of each individual to follow the tenets of the faith of Mitra, which include truthfulness, honor, and trustworthiness. In Mitra's tenets, telling a lie or betraying a friend are mortal sins. Mitra holds his priests to even more strict behavior. Priests of Mitra must remain celibate and must abstain from all alcohol and mind-altering drugs. One of Mitra's most potent aspects is as the defender, protecting Hyborians from evil sorcery, most specifically from his ancient enemy, the serpent god, Set. Now I think it's very obvious that this god will be a defense god. He will defend your cities, he will give you armor, maybe healing. Anyway, moving on to our last god, Krom. Krom, the grim lord of the mound, lives atop a great mountain, sending forth dooms and death, caring little for mankind, save to breathe into man's soul the power to strive and slay. He is the chief god of the Sumerians. The Sumerians believe in a gloomy afterlife, in which the soul of the dead will wander Krom's grey realm aimlessly. It is useless to call upon Krom for aid, because he is a gloomy, savage god, and he hates weaklings. Now I think that Krom will give some sort of power of... some sort of power to the warrior, some sort of power to kill your enemies, some sort of buff. Nothing too sorcery about this fellow, but again, still worth mentioning. We'll have to wait and see. So, to recap over everything we just went over, I can't wait to run an entire army of skeletons and chop all your heads off. Anyway, that's all from me, folks. Bye, till next episode. You're leaving Wizard's Lair.